Huh? Why are you so like uh, like angry about it? Well, honey, because you're not doing what I asked you to do. You you told me that I needed to buy something, no, so I, didn't say I bought something. something. I said it's with food, and you had already said you're your. But why do you have such like you just have such an attitude? You're acting like I'm like a homeless meth addict or something in here uh -huh. that's like disturbing people. I've just been sitting here on my laptop know, for like 20 minutes. We need to clean up before we leave, and you're taking up space. Well, I'm not. There, there's. I'm taking up space. Well, honey, there Look how many open space. How many there open is. tables are? I'm not taking up space of anybody. Well, she told me. I asked you to leave. Okay, yeah. Tell your. You want to tell your supervisor to come talk to me then? I will. Yeah, I'd rather talk to somebody else. I'm not allowed to sit here on my laptop at McDonald's because I'm taking up too much space. <laughs> There's not tables everywhere. This is a story about potential limitations on free public Wi-Fi. Yes, this is in a McDonald's. Uh, is there a limit to what you can do? Should there be some kinds of considerations or actually hurdles you have to cross in order to use this free public Wi-Fi? This TikTok user, his name is Brandon Gross. And he was confronted by McDonald's workers, as you saw there, about his use of his computer and his laptop in this particular McDonald's for an extended period of time. The extended period of time was 25 to 30 <laughs> minutes. Now, after he failed to build this, uh, I guess, rapport with this particular uh, woman that was talking to him, he then got to speak to a supervisor who had some helpful things to say. Let's watch. We got a 30 minute mortar. She told me that originally, so then I went up and I got myself a drink. You have to get food, you know what I'm doing. So I made a purchase, I'm an actual customer of McDonald's okay. now. No. And I'm not allowed to stay? For what reason? Because we have a lo no loitering. So it's loitering since I got a drink and I'm hanging out, drinking my drink. All right, I'll give you 15 more minutes, but then you gotta go. Then can I have my money back for the drink since I'm not even allowed to have it in the store? I'm not even allowed to have my own drink that I paid for in the store at the store. I told you the signs here. You know how crazy that sounds? Like, I get it. Like, if I was, like, disturbing people here or, like, you but know, But that we have no issue. place for the customers to sit when you're What about this table, that table, that table, that table, that table, that table? There's, like, 15 open tables. I'm not, like, for everybody. I'm not talking to you. The problem is we have too many people coming in set for hours on end. That means yeah. that nobody wants to come and sit. I am preventing customers from wanting to sit in McDonald's, is what you're saying. But if we get full and you're sitting, still if you, sitting if there was a lot of people here, I would be out. There's no, there's nobody here. I'm not arguing. I'm just asking you a question. If you're the supervisor, I'd expect you to ask. Oh, well, I asked for the supervisor. Get out of our cops. For what? So now she's gonna call the cops on me. Yo, I can't remember the last time I sat inside of a fast food restaurant and ate. I, I, I can't. There's a reason why there's 35 chairs open. Anyways, now the cops are on their way, you guys. The cops are coming. As the actual supervisor finally showed up and said, get out of here, cops are coming. The cops came and he spoke to the cops. Pay attention to the way this interaction happened between him and the cops after they called the police on him for being in their restaurant. <laughs> What's going on, guys? Sorry to waste your guys' time like that. It is what it is, man. Yeah, you it's so an ID on you that way I can document I spoke with you. Yeah, do you need, need to actually run this for anything or? Yeah, I just, I have to check it, just uh, document, we have to document everything we do. Yeah. So it just goes into like a CAD system. It's not like you're getting in trouble or anything, it's just. A lot of stuff is just, like they'll call in a disorderly customer. I've had KFC call in on a disorderly customer, uh, but he wouldn't do anything disorderly, he's just sitting there. Yeah. I'm like, that. Why? You know, I don't understand, yeah. It is what it is. I mean, it just, yeah, it don't make any sense at all. We'll get out of your hair, man. Be all safe. Right. Yeah, sorry you guys had to, you know, waste your time. No, you're good, man. It's, it is what it is. Yeah. Well, maybe we'll see you guys over at Blue Cove. I don't know. Good thing this guy wasn't like visibly homeless or you know black or brown or anything because they have a nice little back and forth with the cops. Maybe I'll see you at the Blue Cove, buddy. Hey, what's your name, guy? Good job. I don't mean to get in your hair, but let me get out of it now. Have a good day. Now, by the way, I don't think Brandon was in any kind of wrong here, by the way. I just want to point out that even after being booted out for ordering a drink and hanging out on your laptop for 25 minutes, it's not really that big of a deal. But then when the cops were like, yeah, man, we could just calls all the time. I was a KFC, but I whooped his ass because he was homeless. Anyways, um, more because the manager did clear this up. He did finally get a call back, a response from the actual manager, not just that supervisor, about why they have this Wi-Fi. This is the big kicker of this. In the end, this is a graphic one, you guys. Gross revealed that the manager called him the next morning, apologized, and said that the whole reason she got Wi-Fi for that location 
this is again in Athens, Tennessee, was to encourage customers to come stay and work. You know why, David? Because no one goes to an F at McDonald's to come stay and work. <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> Tonight, an Oklahoma woman is in jail after she managed to slip out of her handcuffs in the back of a police car, obtain an AR-15, and open fire on sheriff's deputies, according to local police. The shocking moments were captured on the car's internal camera and police body cams. On Friday, Grady County Sheriff's deputies performed a welfare check on a woman found crawling around someone's yard while barking, according to the charging documents filed in court. The woman identified herself as 36-year-old Rachel Zion Clay. Police handcuffed her and placed her in protective custody in the back of a police car, according to the court documents. But while deputies were outside the car taking statements from civilians nearby, Clay managed to slip out of her cuffs and access a console in the front seat labeled gun, the undersheriff said in an interview. A console in the front seat of this police uh, car labeled gun. Gun is one of those like uh, printout things with the sticker and it says gun in case you forget. This is where your gun is, officer. In fact, your AR-15 is where this is. Maybe they should have labeled it more specifically because she was surprised maybe to see it. Rachel Clay, she was 36 year old as you pointed there. They were there on a wellness check. She was uh, going through potentially a mental health episode and they had in the back seat and she got to shooting. As you saw that one witness that was standing by talking to police trying to help out the situation was shot. Let's watch more. Body camera footage released by police show moments shots ring out. Ow! Confusion as deputies try to figure out what just happened. Andy, I'm hit right here. One civilian receiving a wound to the chest. He's later taken to the hospital, according to NBC affiliate KFOR, while the sheriff's deputy is only grazed by the bullet. As the deputies and the wounded bystander take cover and call for backup, more shots ring out. Got a civilian hit. What the heck? Now Rachel's just straight up going off. By the way, uh, she was also able to get that, not only get that uh, big ass rifle, but also load it and then figure out how to use it. How long were they having her hanging out in the back seat of, of that car where she was able to get out of the handcuffs? Somehow reach around the, 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 uh, the division and get her hands on this huge gun and get to shooting. Hmm. Maybe we'll get to some of those more details later. But uh, there was more on this because they did finally realize she's shooting at us. Let's try and end this. Let's think of how long it took for it to end. Watch more. With the arrival of backup begins an hours long standoff as Clay barricades herself in the police car refusing to emerge. After three and a half hours of negotiations with police and the deployment of an armored breaching vehicle, the woman finally surrenders. If it means saving a life, you take as much time as you need in order to bring this tactical situation to a successful conclusion. If it means saving a life, you take as long as possible. Have we seen that from police officers in these type of situations? Or maybe they would just lit up the car and made sure that the threat was done. Cuz she was shooting and people had already been hit. Who knows if they were gonna survive or not. 